Hello, welcome to the Jenkins uh, governance meeting. Today is uh, July 1st. We have uh, four contributors on the call, Mark Wade, uh, Uli Hafner, Mark Jackson and me. And uh, we have several topics uh, in the agenda uh, for the discussion today. So um, we want to finally sign off um, the Jenkins code of conduct based on the conversation we had at the last uh, governance meeting. Then uh, we have status update for Jenkins CDF radiation and uh, discussion for terminology updates. Is there anything else uh, you would like to put on the list? Okay, uh, let's start uh, from that. So updating uh, code of conduct. Uh, so just to summarize what we discussed last week. Um, let's scroll down a bit. Actually, it's quite convenient. So um, at the last meeting, we agreed uh, to update to contributor covenant uh, 2.0. And my action item was to propose a pull request with co uh, contributor covenant update. Also with other items we agreed on, like using CDF as second level of escalation, etc. And the pull request is here. So the pull request basically incorporates uh, all the changes. It got a number of reviews. Um, I'm not sure, Uli, did you have a chance to take a look? S sorry, I did not have a look at up to now, sorry. Uh, no worries. Quite a hard mm -hmm. week. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's totally understandable. So basically uh, from those who are on the call, uh, yeah, I'm the author, uh, there are three approvals. So I guess, uh, yeah, we can uh, discuss the details, uh, or we can just uh, uh, let uh, Uli to review that. And uh, if it's fine, we just press it with the merge. And so, so Alex Earl, as a board member, has already approved the pull request. Yep. Oleg, you submitted the pull request, so that gives us two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think you're right that Uli's approval would then give us a majority of the board that approves. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, just to clarify, we don't have a uh, majority of the board anyway in the governance at the moment. We have a majority of uh, governance uh, meeting uh, members and votes. At the same time, yeah, having a majority from uh, Jenkins board members also makes sense in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll review it today or tonight. Mm -hmm. So I don't have specific timeline for the merge, but uh, Uli, if you have some time, maybe not today, but tomorrow would be the time. great. Mm -hmm. I just forgot about it. <laughs> no worries. But yeah, thanks to all the reviews, uh, the text uh, looks to be quite smooth and it definitely improves the coverage of uh, particular cases. So hopefully you could merge it soon. Uh, Mark, are you satisfied by the feedback? Yes, completely. I think mm -hmm. your the, the the proposals that you that I had made that you had not accepted you you rejected wisely. So absolutely, you can close out any all of the topics that I had. Uh, yeah. So one thing, yeah, is all chats documented uh, on uh, this page, but yeah, I think it's just a warning thing. So yeah, you, uh, truly, you can resolve all the things that I had raised. Yep. Okay. So this one. That one. Yeah. That one is just wrong, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The the notes already said. Look, we don't want to put mail two links in. Okay. Um, so we have one topic um, about handling of violations, uh, and I believe it actually was a discussion uh, because. Mm, yeah, just uh, to clarify why um, there are changes there, contributor covenant to the zero includes a, its own uh, definition for uh, violations and uh, actions to be taken, but um, it's explicitly considered to be a template for projects. So projects uh, can uh, make adjustments. And um, in the case of Jenkins project, I made some adjustments in order to follow the previous uh, guidelines and previous actions. So for example, uh, contributor covenant, uh, uh, it has uh, two stages. The first is temporary ban, another one is permanent ban. 
In the case of Jenkins project, we didn't have uh, a permanent uh, ban before. Instead of that, we have a ban uh, after 12 months, it can be lifted. So um, I basically tried to merge uh, uh, two definitions and uh, that's how we got it. It's mostly aligned to this contributor covenant, especially in terms of community impact, consequences. It's mostly taken from contributor covenant, except that it's 12 months. At the same time, uh, the problem is with uh, these paragraphs, because these paragraphs are taken from the um, current version of Jenkins Code of Conduct. And uh, yeah, so one uh, potential uh, issue we had is that uh, yeah, in our Code of Conduct, we explicitly say that we will be doing uh, communication say, in private, though uh, contributor covenant doesn't require that. And uh, yeah, so the question on the table is whether we want to keep that or whether we want to just remove it or maybe declare it as an intention. Because in some cases we have to respond publicly. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, yeah, so my, I also think that uh, private communication should be the first uh, uh, step in any case. And uh, only if it doesn't work, or then uh, it might be a public communication, and uh, only in edge cases. So it would be nice to get opinions uh, from others on this topic, because this comment, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's really resolved. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically we have feedback from uh, Jeff and from Mark uh, that we could probably just remove it and follow how contributor covenant is written. Uh, but yeah, it would be great uh, to get your feedback, only Mark. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think it's good if we keep it in private. Mm -hmm. Because uh, then if it's in public, I think it can be a little bit, yeah, then the next step is arising and it's going on and harder and harder. So I think if we can keep it in public, it would be the best thing. Are you, private, saying keep, are you saying keep it in public or keep it in private? I keep it in private, sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I agree with that. I think there has to be a discussion that is done in private with the board uh, or members that are privy to the conversation. I do also agree that the outcome though, depending upon the nature of the infraction, yeah. may, and I, I, I underline, <laughs> may need to be public. But I think by and large, most infractions and the results or the outcome of such infractions will remain private. Yeah, we're on the same page. So basically uh, the question is about using Quill there. Because yeah, uh, as it's written now, it binds us uh, to private communications on there. So is the question about removing that line? Uh, or just in case to highlight that, uh, yep, uh, in which cases we may go public. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I totally agree that it should be only for edge cases. Correct. The resolution mm -hmm. of violations are done in private and affected people will be notified. Yeah, I think that should stay the way it is. Is that what everybody's agreeing to? So I thought, I thought Oleg's question was really the, the statement is will be done in private and that would preclude our doing it in public even for a serious or particularly grave infraction. I think we want the flexibility to be allowed to discuss and to bring it to the to public if we need to, don't we, Oleg? Yes, that's the point. So yeah, for me, it's just a reading because this, uh, basically we as Jenkins governance board are not allowed to act on, in public. For example, someone, uh, well, let's go, uh, say goes public on Twitter, et cetera, uh, uh, release code of conduct today as official representative, then 
uh, keeps doing so, and uh, currently we are binded to not uh, reply to in public. And that. Oh, so you're saying yeah. take this out or adjust uh, to highlight that it's our default behavior uh, to operate in uh, private. But uh, in particular cases, uh, the governance board may opt out to attend in public. I think, uh, so my vote would be leaving this in, but amending it for the use of edge case public announcements. And I think even when we say edge case public announcements, we almost should be very specific in saying, you know, I don't even know how much we have to say, but if I just talking out loud, if there is the need to go public for a certain infraction, I don't think the full disclosure is needed. We can mm -hmm. say, you know, like, and I'm just trying to use examples here. If there's an infraction of racism, we and it's it's publicly known that this infraction took place but the viol uh, the reporter did this in private the conversation with the board starts in private the outcome would be private but there'd be a public side to it that says this infraction uh, or because of a an infraction i don't know i'm trying to think of a yeah so here's public announcement of resolution I guess, yeah, yeah, we are definitely not bringing uh, the entire conversation uh, to public or the report or whatever. Uh, yeah, just uh, the resolution. Yeah, I just think there needs to be an addition here that under certain uh, circumstances, public reporting may be necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say uh, handling of violations uh, will be done in private and affected, uh, people will be notified. Uh, uh, um, this is, so there will be no, uh, not be a public announcement uh, of the resolution unless uh, the uh, Governance. Uh, yep. Deems it necessary or something like that. Yeah, unless the governance board deems it necessary for a public response or, or something. Does everybody else agree with that? Mm. And I think 99.9% well, 99.8% of the cases will, this will not apply to. Everything will just be done in private. Uh, but there are those certain cases that may require the need to have a public sort of comment. Mm. Okay. In the majority of cases, uh, there will not be a public announcement of the resolution unless the governance board uh, deems it necessary to announce it, uh, the resolution in public. So do the in the majority of cases phrasing, I think you did intentionally, um, mm -hmm. is that a potential sticking point or problem for someone saying, hey, I'd like to sample your data to see that really you're handling the majority this way? <laughs> Mm, it's uh, you won't provide no. this data because it's <laughs> it's private. private. Okay, got it. No problem. Well, uh, yeah, the we as governance uh, board members uh, have history uh, access to the history of previous escalations. Okay, but uh, that's it. Uh, so, so I believe you don't really share this information with anyone else. Okay, should I uh, submit it as this? Mm -hmm. Once you once you commit that that comment, I'll, I'll I'm going to give it a thumbs up as my approval, even though I have a non-binding approval. Approval okay. matters, I guess. Okay, so I will just submit it. Okay, and I believe this was uh, the last uh, comment which actually needed discussion, so.
Yeah, there is another one which is basically linked to the meeting notes. So I, I, yeah, you can delete that one. That's that you were correct. I made a mistake even offering that one. No, no, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I will just need to reference the today's meeting, I guess. Okay. So, uh, well, I guess here, do we really need to vote? Or do we agree that uh, based on uh, Uli's feedback, we uh, merge it or not? I think we've 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 got the equivalent of a vote in pull request. So when Uli gives the approval, that for me is sufficient. Okay. Okay. Mm. So. Plus uh, Jeff, Alex, uh, early in uh, the pull request, mm -hmm. and yeah. Okay. So does it summarize the discussion well? Yeah. Okay. So next, Jenki uh, City of Graduation Report. Well, uh, I'll make it really quick. So yeah, we have this thread uh, from Tracy about uh, the city of graduation. Mm, basically, nothing changed in terms of target dates. We still uh, uh, would like to have it uh, done by the end of the July. Uh, regarding the progress, um, yeah, we have some items. So for example, code of conduct. Hopefully, we get it done. Then uh, there are some items which are already passed or passed with some questions. Because, for example, we do not have documentation for the weekly process. Well, at all. So I believe that uh, we'll need uh, to spend some time and document that. And whether we want uh, to create or not, I believe it's an important thing to do. Um, same, yeah, there are some bits about uh, uh, guidelines, but uh, um, all of that is preferable. So, for example, um, uh, explicitly defined project governance and committee process, we have both. Um, but uh, not in the right locations. So uh, these right locations should be, uh, again, it's nice to have, uh, but it would be nice to do that. So Oleg, um, on that governance yeah. MD, it seems like the authoritative location is the Jenkins.io governance documents, isn't it? Or are you, is this, is there expectation there that it's some sort of that it's authoritative because it's in the source code repository. Mm, yeah, so the preference that uh, there is, so for example, this is preferably laid out in a governance MD file. So it means that we can just put the governance MD file, which references uh, Jenkins IO project governance. Okay, I see. So it's not a broken sense. And also reference a contributing MD and owner's MD for, uh, for showing uh, the current and emeritus committers. So, um, to be honest, I'm not sure why we need to show the current and emeritus committers at all, especially in owners. Uh, but yeah, this is how it's uh, worded, and basically it's the same in CNCF uh, guidelines. Okay. So what would be my approach today that, yeah, for owners, well, we have code owners. Uh, the problem with code owners is that it uh, references a team. And if you're not a member of a Jenkins GitHub organization, you cannot access members of this team. Uh, I'll put comment here. Uh, the, so we may want to do something. At the same time, I'm not exactly sure what we, uh, Exactly to do. Probably I'll need to do a homework and see how CNCF projects handle that. Uh, but uh, again, I do not think it's a blocker in any means because it's preference. And we have another format. So we can just reference the existing documentation in our graduation ap application. Um, okay, thanks for the clarity on that.
Mark, maybe you know how com how it's commonly approached in CNCF. For which part? I apologize. Uh, owners, owners MD. And not code owners. Owners MD. The owners MD for the CNCF breaks it into two parts. There's the reviewer, and there's the approver. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that, and I gotta double check this, but I'm about eighty percent sure that actually comes from the Linux Foundation. So the same criteria would apply to the CDF. Yes. So owners yeah. would have to be, uh, there would need to be certain breakouts of who can approve a PR, who can review a PR. Okay, we can just uh, take a look right away. So Prometheus, if you go to the main repository, he, okay, there is no owner SMD at all, even though the project is- Go to, Fal go to Falco. <clears throat> Okay. It's a risky, I did this right? for Falco. Yeah, there it is right ah. there. Okay. And yeah, so there yep. is owners, I believe this is owners and D. So it's approvers and reviewers. Yep. Okay. And each area of Jenkins. So if you go back out to the root of the Falco security uh, org mm -hmm. and go into, scroll down, go to the client go. I think it was. And then look at the owners there. You'll see a different set of owners. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'm in this owner's file, but I'm not at the root of Falco for the Falco uh, mm -hmm. code base. So, each various repo under the uh, Jenkins will have to have a different owner's file. You cannot just specify across the board. Well, uh, so it's a good question what uh, will be exactly required there? Because yeah, my understanding that we certify Jenkins as a contributed project, right? Not Jenkins I, plugins, but yeah, yeah still. Uh, there are I some. think it's only going to apply to the Jenkins infra repo, which is where everything mainly is housed. And I also think in our documentation, if we list out that in lieu of having an owner's file. If we have the code owners, but there's also managed through the GitHub teams like we do for Jenkins, mm -hmm. I think that would satisfy the requirement. But we have to list that out. Mm -hmm. Like well, if we have to list out each team, but we have to give an example that for Jenkins.io, there's these level of reviewers, this level of appro approvers. Yeah, the problem that you cannot really see members. Uh, it's not so much that you need to uh, specify the members in there. I think mm -hmm. we'll be able to get away. Let me double check on that. We... Yeah, so my plan is to actually go to the next uh, CDF talk meeting and uh, to clarify uh, some bits. So I will just add it to my list. I will, I'll actually be there on that meeting with you because I'm doing the Spinnaker graduation. So I have to go through mm -hmm. the same exercise. Okay. So let's see what's next. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. Regarding the next, um, so having a public list of adopters. Uh, so we have a third party service. Uh, we have old wiki page, which I was unable to find. Uh, but I believe it's there, I will find it. Uh, so my preference is to actually uh, start from uh, listing users who submitted uh, feedback to Jenkins is the way. Um, and uh, we have uh, signed up from uh, submitters to use company logos. So we can start from just using this data and maybe voluntary data from other users uh, to have initial uh, list of uh, adopters. Yeah, it's basically summarized here. So uh, that's my plan here. 
uh, again, uh, a wiki uh, content is slightly obsolete, so I'm not sure whether it makes sense to really move it over to Jenkins.io, but uh, we can uh, figure it out later. Okay, what's next? Yeah, then uh, CRI. So CRI status is basically the same as before. Um, I started discussion with uh, security team about the security checklist. Uh, we started the discussion about triage team for Jenkins core, uh, but the yeah, triage team, um, yeah, the problem that we, re if we found this team, we sh needed to really operate. And we need to find contributors who are able to dedicate, let's say, a few hours per week or consistently. Uh, otherwise, uh, this team doesn't uh, uh, have chance to cover the use case needed for CI graduation. So, uh, yep. Do, do you have some ideas on how to approach staffing and starting the triage team? Uh, I saw mm -hmm. Alex had relaunched a discussion about it? Are there other ideas that have been successful, things that we should be considering? Uh, I'm oh. part of the Kubernetes triage team. Mm -hmm. I could I could help here. And I think I did, uh, I, I did note in the, that, that I could, I yeah, have right. a, lot of, so, a lot of good knowledge here for Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically we have it back from Mark, Keith, Ladin, uh, Alex, Mark, Vlad. But yeah, again, uh, the problem is about uh, being able to dedicate time consistently, because otherwise it will be difficult uh, to meet SLAs uh, declared, uh, declared by ACI. And could you overview those SLAs again? What What's the expectation mm -hmm. from CII? Okay, let, let me show it to you. I, I'm trying to de decode how frightened should I be no, you shouldn't be that frightened. So basically, we uh, comply with two criteria. One, uh, but so two criteria are still on the table. The project must acknowledge uh, a majority of bug reports submitted uh, in the last two to 12 months inclusive. Uh, the response uh, need not include a fix. So last time I did a query, even if you talk about Jenkins score, it's about uh, 200 of uh, bugs which haven't uh, received a response yet. Uh, only for Jenkins score and its components. We are not talking about uh, the entire plugin ecosystem. And uh, the project should respond to a majority of enhancement requests in the last tw <laughs> two to 12 months. It's even worse. Uh, well, so that's uh, the problem. Just uh, doing this uh, uh, cleanup, it requires a lot of grooming. Okay, thank you. Thanks for reviewing it. Yeah, so my action item here is to actually create queries because yeah, I already pulled this data, but I didn't uh, document the queries, which is totally my fault. Uh, but yeah, we are not uh, meeting this criteria right now. Even though a majority of bug reports, yeah, I guess it's also 50%, but yeah, definitely we need uh, to collect these metrics and then uh, to see how we could improve them. So we are below these metrics. Okay, any questions about that? So are either of those somehow directly or strongly connected to the core committers dashboard that Daniel Beck had created or not so much? Mm, Is there anything? Definitely related. Okay. So Daniel's dashboard, uh, it mostly targets LCS releases, uh, report mm. regressions and other bits. So it's important. And of course, uh, we need to document it as a part of uh, maintenance guidelines. But at the same time, it doesn't really cover feature requests at all. Right. Well, and, and, it, and it doesn't cover weeklies. You, you noted it's primarily LTS focused. Well, it makes sense. I can, I also really monitor reports to LTS or regressions. But, oh, we actually just hit 20,000 open issues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I missed that. I missed that part. Uh, yeah, vacation was nice. 
Okay. Only 512 of them are for the Git plugin. Or like only 512. Okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I can just uh, show an example uh, and uh, type. Uh, is it a feature actually? Uh, it's new feature, I believe, or oh, improvement. Yeah, that's a problem with our Jira because yeah, we really need uh, to build these queries and not everything really fits them. But yeah, you can see that. Uh, so just the issues. Uh, yeah, so we have almost 1,000 uh, RFEs in the open status. Many of them have been created recently. Uh, many of them have been created but uh, by usual suspects, but uh, not all of them. Um, and yeah, just cleaning that up uh, will require some time. Now they they did not dis define any what does acknowledge mean. So it's enough. There there are all sorts of ways we could acknowledge. It could be heavy or lightweight. So we have flexibility there. Is that correct or not so much? Mm, yeah, we have uh, some flexibility. But yeah, still, uh, if we want uh, to really deliver on that, then uh, we need to define metrics. We need to define ways how to uh, quickly access these metrics. It's not like just uh, documenting uh, the team. We really need uh, to do significant work to clean it up. Yeah, let's see. So. Mm, yeah, it's on my list uh, for July. Um, again, uh, so good things that we had a discussion about uh, requirements with uh, um, uh, CDF talk, and the feedback was that we are not required to have 100% at least right now. Uh, but yeah, at the same time, I think we should uh, really target 100% if we can. Uh, but yeah, it will be lower priority than uh, major requirements like this one. Okay, any questions? Sorry, it wasn't uh, a quick one after all, but yeah, hopefully I summarized uh, the current struggles here. Okay, so terminology updates. Does anyone want to do a status report? I can. Okay. Uh, before our next meeting, or before the next uh, board meeting, I will work with Alex to get the uh, the list comprised, as well as the template uh, announcement. We uh, there's still a lot of stuff that that's currently in flight. But that's the main thing that we're working on right now to get ready for the, the voting piece. So essentially, Alex and I will get the the draft uh, email that will be going out with the terminology. We will then give that to you, Mark. And I think if it's my understanding from our last meeting, you will you're going to be doing the setting up the actual voting infrastructure. Correct. Awesome. So we will get that to you sooner rather than later. Great. Mm -hmm. Yep. So one question is how do we uh, communicate uh, um, uh, voting once um, we are ready to trade on that? Is it just a uh, mailing list plus social media? Uh, or do you plan uh, to do something more to, com to communicate it? Definitely think that uh, mailing list is, is, should be done. I don't think we should do social media. Allow me to mm -hmm. dive into why I feel that way. And this is just an opinion, non-binding. Uh, these changes are needed. They are, they are welcomed, but they are not everything. What I mean by that is, 
I just saw somebody tweet something and the tweet, I'm not going to read it verbatim, but mm -hmm. changing all of the terminology is great, but somebody still fears for their life when they go jogging. Now I know that doesn't mean to what we're talking about. I would feel better if we just put the vote out and started doing the work. We don't need to publicize it. We just need to do the work quiet. No, I don't want to say quietly. I don't want to be the organization that's tooting their horn. That look what we're doing right now. I think it's great when we make changes, we let know that the changes are made, but mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to, I don't think it brings value to a larger conversation through social media. I think if we vote, we put the vote out, we send it to people that are like we did much for the board votes and officer votes, it should sort of be the same way. And, and, and that's what we do. And that's how the communication goes. Yeah, the problem that's, is that, uh, oh, sorry for interrupting you. No, 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 I was done. Uh, yeah, uh, so the problem is uh, this number of replies we want to get. Because if we just announce it through the mailing list, most likely it will be around dozens. Uh, we will unlikely hit a hundred of responses or so to this vote. If we uh, promote it through social media, yes, it will be like uh, about hundreds. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes so, sense. So, Oleg, in terms of the response, the response rate to the voting for, that we did last year. So we did a large scale notification um, and still had a, 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 a very small fraction of those who were voting or who were eligible to vote who actually voted. So I, for me, I don't see any problem with announcing it on social media to encourage more people to vote. It's just a vote. And we agreed it's non-binding, right? This is, this is still truly a non-binding thing that the the governance board will ultimately have the ultimate decision authority. That's my understanding as well, Mark. Uh, I also retract my opinion. I do, if the voting turnout is gonna be so low, I do think we should do mailing list as well as a social media announcement. Yeah. So for mailing list, if you ask about developer mailing list, here we've got a lot of feedback uh, already. Yeah, so we have a Google Doc, but it doesn't incorporate feedback we've got over the past two weeks. So there are more feedback and more votes which could be added. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we could uh, use CIFs or whatever to do another round with formal vote. But uh, if this vote is an advisory vote anyway, I'm not sure how much edit value it has. If we don't target a serious uh, number of responses. Yeah, then I say it needs to go to social media as well. I just think we wanna make sure we're very careful in the way we're presenting it. Yeah. I'm happy to leave it uh, to those uh, who are uh, directly impacted by the matter. So, yeah, anyway, we have time until uh, the next governance meeting uh, to decide on the procedure and how we communicate that. I believe we still need to press it with selecting top 10 options. Yeah, from this list, we uh, got a number of front runners. But I'm not sure whether this list is fully inclusive right now. Okay, first action item mm -hmm. is Alex and I need to get the uh, the items to Mark so Mark can take the second action item to create yeah. the, the voting infrastructure. Okay, then I think it is. So other action items we have. So terminology proposal time has expired. So basically we operate on what we've got uh, in this thread. At least it's my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, starting a working group. Yeah. 
Mike Chinati has to create a page skeleton. Uh, but yeah, I guess it doesn't look anything because we really need working group uh, not for delivering the vote, etc., but uh, delivering uh, the implementation afterwards. But still, it makes sense to do that. Okay, anything else on this topic? Nothing for me. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, 15 minutes left. Uh, do we want to discuss any other topics? We can give a brief update uh, on the roadmap, but basically yeah, really brief one. So yeah, since the last meeting, uh, there were some changes in terms of uh, roadmap implementation. I mean, since the last meeting uh, when we discussed that. So now the filtering, et cetera, it's integrated. Uh, I will spend a bit more time uh, to support filtering by special interest groups and other things, but uh, even now it provides some uh, information and we have the majority of the stories uh, on the list. Tomorrow I will finally submit um, a proposal about uh, Jenkins Online Meetup for developers about the roadmap, uh, but I think that we are in the position uh, to move uh, forward and to approve the process. Uh, but yeah, I would be really interested to get more feedback on this topic because yeah, the process basically, yeah, there were some minor changes in terms of um, categories, naming, etc. but in principle, the process didn't change. So we would be doing uh, a slot for a roadmap discussion at the governance meeting until there is a technical steering committee or the similar entity taking over the technical um, uh, evolution part. And uh, yeah, before that, it would be just a governance meeting. So if uh, it's fine with everyone, uh, my suggestion would be to move forward and to actually uh, accept this uh, job as active because yeah, it already provides some value and uh, we can uh, get a uh, additional uh, contributions and uh, more visibility by promoting it. So that's why I would like to move forward. Uh, so yeah, my plan is uh, to um, uh, submit voting at the next uh, governance meeting uh, to formally approve it. Uh, I already discussed it with Alex, who is a BDFL delegate in this job. But basically, we would be operating um, as a, uh, based on the result of the next governance uh, board meeting. Yeah. So, any concerns about uh, getting it matched? Mm, I mean, getting it uh, into the active state. No, I'm for plus me. one. Yeah, plus one. For, for me, too. Yeah. Still. It uh, needs some housekeeping because items uh, constantly move uh, to uh, preview and release columns, which I really like, but uh, that's why we need a more or less a regular meeting uh, to do the scrap and to ensure that everything is on the same place. So for example, many JSOC projects are actually in the preview status now. So for example, machine learning, we have, we have got alpha release, we have checks API, we've got alpha release. Then UI theme management, uh, we've got uh, alpha release of the plugin. And what else? Well, basically other topics uh, then preview as well. Like for example, external fingerprint storage. So I will uh, also do this cleanup before the voting. But the process itself seems to be working okay. We just need more contributors who actually submit uh, entries um, as, and yeah, we especially rely on special interest groups and uh, sub-projects uh, to submit updates and to submit their roadmaps. Point so, well taken. <laughs> well, it wasn't uh, about... Uh, no, I know, I know. But yeah, all of us have to learn, but I think that having a public and open roadmap is something we really need as a project. So deeply agreed. Mm -hmm. Let's try to get it over the line. And if uh, anyone has uh, some JavaScript skills, you're welcome to contribute to filtering, to search, to visualization, because yeah, basically it's somewhere at the limits of my JavaScript skills. Okay.
working. So I guess that's it. And yeah, I also update uh, governance uh, roadmap entries because, for example, we don't have CDF graduation here. We do, don't really have conduct uh, code of conduct here, which yeah, it will likely just uh, length as released, but whatever. Uh, so if you see any missing items or any missing major initiatives we should add, uh, please do so. And yeah, I guess the same for terminology. Because terminology, we, uh, I haven't acted on uh, action items. So we still have agent terminology, but we don't have um, items for other terminology cleanups. And yeah, it's an open question whether we want to have a single one or multiple ones, but yeah. Um, we at least need uh, to have it on the list. Okay. Anything else for today? Nothing for me. Nothing for me. Uh, nothing for me as well. So then, thanks everyone for your time. And then, uh, so next meeting will be in two weeks. So it will be July 15th, right? Mm -hmm. We can just keep it as is. Okay. Unless uh, there are coming funds. Well, I will miss that meeting, but the meeting can certainly go ahead without me. Okay, but thanks for the heads up. And yeah, we'll try to get uh, more people on the call. So let's see. So thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Have a good day, afternoon, night. Bye. Bye. Thanks for your time.